people today we're going to be using some of dollar tree's newer home decor pieces if you haven't been a dollar tree lately then you must not be following me over on my browser brandy channel i'll excuse you but anyhow they have a bunch of new home decor pieces and we're going to start out by using what i'm going to call a wood round now as nice as this thing looks let's check this out this thing is really on the half it's not painted up right it's definitely not even with our edge measurements here you can pop these off easily there's a lot going on now if you want to make it a little bit more high end you could take them off re-glue them precisely you could take some caulk or some spackling smoosh it on in there even it out wait for that to dry we're not going to do any of that because i'm being lazy today and i'm going to show you how to do that and still get a nice high-end finish taking some antique waverly wax with a little bit of a wet paper towel and we're going to just kind of give the center a little bit more of a tinted brown look not heavy and if you want you can leave your beads plain or completely stain them i just decided to take a little bit of the wax and go around them and give them a light tint next make sure your piece is dry you can do this however you want if you like to wait it out you do you I am impatient, so I'm using the heat gun. Next, we're just gonna take some white chalk paint and we're gonna go around the edge and we're gonna go around the inner part of this. That's why we needed to make sure that wax was dry because if not, this will kind of blend together. Next, we're gonna take some clay. Now, this is my favorite clay. This is what I personally like to use and a mold. You can use whatever mold you want. I feel birdie, you know? So <laughs> using this bird mold I picked up from Amazon. Now there's always a ton of questions about clay and here's what I'll tell you. I have carpal tunnel syndrome and some other health issues. I struggle with gripping in my hands. I have used several different types of clay. This is my favorite. It is the easiest to mold around and it does not hurt my hands and look how beautiful that comes out i also do furniture art and this is just my favorite to use in general especially with wood and mostly you're going to want to let this dry overnight but when i do tiny projects like this i kind of cheat the system okay and i use the heat gun don't go around spreading it all right it's not the best thing now i do recommend using cornstarch in your molds don't be a rebel like me okay i just happen to be confident in my peeling skills <laughs> and it literally it will stick okay so cornstarch i couldn't find mine at the current moment i redid my craft room and i think i hid it for myself i'm just saying <laughs> at some point i'm gonna find it and be proud of myself for where i put it Usually I don't worry too much if there's extra bits around the main mold of the clay piece, but the, since this one was kind of tiny, I took my clay tool and just kind of pushed in and molded around the edges. I was very gentle like, you can pick these up off Amazon, they're nothing special, and just kind of created some individuality with the sections and remember when i told you guys that i used the heat gun and you're really not supposed to do that it's better to just let it dry yeah <laughs> that happens once i was happy with how dry these were i then took some white paint and painted them now typically i will already take the wood glue while they are not dry and attach them to my piece but since i had already stained this and really did not want to get any paint on the piece i decided to wait and here's what you want to attach them before it is easy for them to kind of just break apart from each other in really thinly connected <laughs> sections like this one especially since it's such a detailed little mold and even though i used a heat gun and it is mostly dry you know I didn't wait the full 24 hours. That's my bad. But that's why you're going to wait. Okay. You're going to wait. And you could use whatever size mold you want with this idea. I was actually inspired by a piece I seen recently in one of my Browse with Brandy videos. I did at Walmart. And the piece was like $18. And I was like, we can totally make this much 
cheaper with Dollar Tree supplies. And of course, I felt like we needed the original bird to have a little friend. Okay, so we added a little bird, an extra one, and then a little floral piece up in the corner. And then I'm going to just take some gilding wax to kind of bring out the pops in that clay. Now, you do not have to use gilding wax. If you do not have gilding wax, no worries. Use paint. Okay, you can use paint. Just dry brush it before you start getting wild. It won't seal like gilding wax, but you're gonna get the overall desired effect with that as well. I really love how simple and elegant this piece turned out. Got a little bit of boho going on, a little bit of farmhouse feel. You can keep it nice and plain or add a little bit of greenery to the top for a little something extra. When I seen these little houses, I'm like, what can we do with the house? What haven't people done with the house? It is rough coming up with ideas. And then I was like, you know what? We're going to take a little piece of scrap wood. We're going to put it on the back to brace it a little bit because we're going to create a hanger out of this little house. Now, one of my best TikToks and one of my best shorts was me taking one of Dollar Tree's houses and creating a hanger out of it. For that one, I used a knob. For this one, we're gonna actually use a hanger. And then we're gonna need to bring in the stapler. Cause we're gonna have to make sure the thing, the little piece of um, scrap wood we put on the back here is really secured. You can add wood glue on here if you want. That's gonna give it an extra stability, but we're going to screw in the hanger. So it's gonna catch the piece of wood and we're gonna staple it through the front. You're not going to notice the staples because we're going to put a little bit of decoupage over this. So it's going to cover it mostly. And of course the staples don't go all the way in. So make sure you use a hammer to adjust that. They also have these in white. If you're going to decoupage like I am, I would recommend getting the white instead of the black. It would avoid you having to put several layers of white chalk paint on that. And the reason you want to do that is because the napkins are really thin and that black will pop right through your napkin, especially a light one like this. Lucky for me, this napkin was the exact perfect width of the house. So I really only had to trim down the top part of the house. If you've never decoupaged a napkin before, I like to say less is more and go section by section attaching from your end point and working your way to the other end. Depending on the project, sometimes you want to start right in the center. But for this, I'm using my sponge method. This is not a wet sponge. It is a dry sponge. And I use this to press down on the napkin because it catches the Mod Podge as it pulls through the napkins. Napkins are pretty porous and it will come through the other side. The sponge grabs that and then allows me to also be able to press it down and get a pretty wrinkle free look. There are many different ways to decoupage, but if you're going for a perfect wrinkle free look, then the iron oil method is definitely your best go to. I'm not trying to squeeze no iron inside this tiny little house, but my sponge, however, fits just perfectly. When you're decoupaging the inside of something like this and you're going to need to cut off the excess, I have a little trick for you. Get your Mod Podge right up to where you want it, up to the corners and press as tightly as you can where you have that Mod Podge put on and you're going to make sure it's a light application because if you have a heavy application, then you're going to have that Mod Podge squeeze everywhere. We don't want that. We want to keep the wood, the wood and the Mod Podge just on the white background. Now we're going to let this dry for an hour. And while this is drying because we want to hang it on the wall, we're going to use a hammer in sawtooth hanger and just attach it to the back. Now at this point, many of you may think I'm gonna grab the hot glue, but we're not gonna do that. Like I said in the beginning, we're going to screw these in. I want to be able to actually use this and hang it on the wall and not worry about it popping off at some point. And only screws or nails are gonna actually give me that where I can hang hats and a jacket or anything off of this. And I'm not gonna have to worry about it. Hot glue, I'm gonna have to worry if it's gonna pop off, okay, at some point. Now, remember how I said a couple of minutes ago that I'm gonna show you an easy way to trim the decoupage? Take a wet paintbrush, just water, after it's completely dry, like I said, we let this dry for an hour, and then you're gonna come in 
and it's going to just peel right up. If you notice it's not perfectly peeling up, I wouldn't recommend using your finger like this because you're still going to have little bits. I would take, I have little clay tools, or you could even use, if you have an X-Acto knife, you could use that as well and put right in the crease and then you will get a perfect peel up of exactly where the napkin left off with the Mod Podge in your crease. I do wish I would have put one more layer of the white paint underneath the napkin. You can see a couple little uneven spots in there since the napkin is so translucent. But I love the practicality of this piece, whether you're using it for a dog leash, some keys, a scarf, a hat, a jacket, it works so well. People, y'all are going to laugh at me for this one, but I just thought this house was so flipping cute when I seen it. I was like, and it has a kickstand. <laughs> like oh it's so cute i have the cutest and easiest diy for this and it's super high-end looking you could take any two stencils that you want and you could do a race stencil on this as well if you want or they have the chalk couture whatever works for you the idea still stands take one that has a word saying and do it up the side of the house and you're just stenciling that in and then you're going to take some type of decorative design this i kind of used an ornate tribal looking piece that was in the shape of a circle and i stenciled this in i really think it would look absolutely amazing using a raised stencil on the piece that we're doing a shape and for this i decided to kind of fade out the stencil i made it really dark around the edges and then it kind of tapered off as we got towards the center and that is it for this. My first super simple, easy DIY of 2023. These don't come easy to me, people. So drink it on in. What do you guys think of it? For this one, we're going to bust out a wreath. And if you've been hanging out with me for any length of time, you should know you should get real excited because I am horrible at wreaths. But I picked this up for $3.99 at Christmas Tree Shops. And I'm like really into door swags recently. So I thought, let's mush this sucker on up instead of taking a bunch of pieces of greenery i'm gonna take this four dollar wreath and mush it together pop the bottom out like make the bottom a little bit fatter than the top and we're gonna just create a door swag and if you guys have never messed with a wreath before these little wire ends, they're really manipulable, so you can move them however you want. So I just made sure to cover what little gap. You can use zip ties in the center there if you want to really close the gap up, especially up at the top, and pull it closer together. I was pretty happy with how this was all on its own, and kind of just pushed the greenery towards the bottom. I know you're thinking, Brandy, this ain't Dollar Tree, but it is, because it's all centered around dollar trees metal lace or ribbon you know whatever makes you fuzzy inside you call it what you want lace ribbon either way we're using this and i'm using these little ties to attach this since it's going on my door i'm not going to trust hot glue or just glues to make sure that this thing don't fall apart when the sun hits it we're going to know that these little ties have the ribbon attached with the wire pieces so i picked two little ends that would allow the wire to settle on the greenery like this like the bottom of a bell or the lace not the wire i don't know why i keep calling it wire and then we have to create the top parts of the ribbon now i will or the top parts of the bell oh my gosh i am completely tongue-tied now i would recommend using more than just one of these i would do three on each side to make it look more realistic like a bow i only use one because of all the ribbon i had this was the only one i only had one string of this and also just a heads up for those of you that resell this lace will rust i had a project that i did over christmas with this and when i was cleaning up my christmas stuff I noticed that it rusted and so I went through my stash and I had two rolls of this that actually rusted and this stuff is sitting in my dining room it's not in any particular drafty I had a lot of people say well was it here was it here no it was in my dining room it rusted and I had other ones that rusted I also had 
other people say that they've had that as well. So if you resell, keep that in mind. Hobby Lobby also sells metal ribbons. So if you have one local to you, here are my three favorite ones that I use from there very often in case you're interested. This was definitely the most difficult part of creating this metal bow. And again, earlier, like how I said, I would have done three on each side. It just would have given it more of a realistic bow effect other than these little lonely warriors here on the side. I really love how it turned out at the end of the day, but the three would have just gave it such a better look in my opinion. I took the little zip tie piece and I found me a little piece to connect it to on our swag and then clip the extra off and made sure it was tucked in place really, really well. That's what I like about this metal ribbon is once you get it situated, it doesn't move. I was going for a really rustic look with this piece. I just really like how simple and rustic a lot of these look online. And <laughs> they look like somebody's just walking by and seen a really cool looking branch and just threw some stuff on them. <laughs> So I was trying to go for that. I took some burlap and some of this other stuff that I'm not even sure where I picked it up from, cut it down to size to create our first loop. And I popped that through the very top of our swag and cut that down to size. Now I'm not using glue or anything like that for this. Like I said, this is gonna be on my door, so it's gonna be out in the weather. So I brought in the stapler, the mini stapler. And I'm just going to pop a bunch of staples in this where I overlapped all the pieces together. This, like I said, is our first loop. We're gonna need to create another loop. And the next one, I'm gonna make a little bit longer because that one's going to intertwine or go through this smaller one and that's the one we're going to be using to hang on the door if you want to change out your ribbon at this point like have two different ones you go right ahead i wanted mine to be all consistent throughout this little hook part right here we're creating so i just cut the same ribbon right on up and i well the burlap and the ribbon because it's two pieces <laughs> and stapled it on up making sure that this was not going to fall off the door i really like how this was just like this but felt like it needed just a little bit more of something so i took the ribbon that i don't know where i got it from or what it's called and started tucking it around our ribbon and inside of the wreath or swag whatever you want to call it you could use tacky glue in addition to make sure this is held down really well I'm using Gorilla Glue Gel to attach this little wood flower for our final finish. And I know that that's going to hold on throughout the weather. This has been up on my door for several days now at this point, And the weather has not been kind. <laughs> it has been cold and windy and it's still doing just fine. I love it so, so much. And it was such a budget friendly piece to create. As always, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. And until next time.